everyone. Um, so I'm Wes Purvis, and I'm going to talk about 6 gigahertz again, because I did it last year too. So last year, this is pretty much what I said. Um, you know, we, we, we think that there's going to be some friction with, uh, you know, with adoption of 6 gig because of WPA3, and I think that has largely turned out to be the case. Um, but generally, this, this guidance, which was, I would say, early guidance for us, still, you know, still continues. But we've had a full year under our belt um, with now large-scale 6 gigahertz deployments. And now we have basically completed the client ecosystem where every major operating system has released a client device. So we kind of understand, I guess, uh, client behavior now. So, and that plays into design a little bit as well. So what have we learned? First of all, your SSID strategy comes out to be important of how you adopt six gigahertz. So, what, what do you do? Do you do separate SSIDs, you know, a six gig only SSID? Do you do, you know, a five plus six? Do you do, uh, you know, have a separate two four only? Do a five plus, like, there's, there's so many options, and it really comes down to what works for you. Now, some, some industries have constraints, like in higher ed, you have Edgerome, which cannot be different in any way. Um, and so, you know, what, I think in higher ed, what we've seen, most people are just, you know, turning on six gig um, on their existing edge roam. And at least with MIST, largely, I think it's working um, pretty well. Uh, one, I think one recommendation that I'll make is just from a device standpoint, discovering six gigahertz, we see that if you have multi-band SSIDs, that generally works better than having six gig only SSIDs. If you have a six gig only SSID, at bare minimum, make sure that five gig or another band is also enabled on the AP so that the client can discover that, um, that six gig uh, SSID using an out-of-band discovery mechanism. Um, one thing I'll point out is we've, um, we've been using this transition mode, um, especially with WPA3 Enterprise, which I think as JJ mentioned, is it's, it, under the covers it's actually very similar. Um, but w at least with MIST, you can have a, a single WLAN across all three you know, all three bands with transition mode, and we do some things behind the scenes to only do transition in the, you know, 245 and 6 gig, you do full WPA3. Um, so, <laughs> um, but when you're thinking about your, your 6 gig, you know, you know, adopting 6 gig, you first have to think about WPA3 and OWE, and it really, there's some nuance to the different security types. So WPA3 Enterprise, very easy to adopt. You, if you're not doing it already, turn it on. You're, like, you're very likely, there's, you'll encounter no issues with turning on WPA3 Enterprise, um, especially if you do transition mode. WPA3 Personal is like low-ish risk. Um, we have seen some interop issues, especially with transition mode. So you know, I, I know transition mode gets a little bit of grief as it should in, in personal. Um, but some clients, especially like older Android clients and, and like the original Microsoft Surface, um, really just don't like WPA3 transition at all. Um, so this, is, this may be where you think about, okay, do I do a separate you know, 245 SSID for my older devices that don't have any WPA3 support and then just do a pure WPA3 in like five plus six? Um, but this is where you, you, know, you, you kind of comes down to you and your, you know, your organization's needs. Um, also note that the, you know, multi-pre-shared key, which I think has become useful in, um, you know, in many deployments, um, is limited in six gig. You're generally limited to um, a Mac-based um, or other restrictions that are imposed. From a guest access standpoint or open access, OWE is the least mature of, you know, the three here. Um, but now we we finally have kind of broad device support with iOS 16 and the latest Mac OS, there is OWE support. Um, just realistically, you're probably gonna need to turn on transition mode because of the lack of device support. Um, but the point of this slide is, if you haven't turned on WPA3, if you haven't played around with WPA3, do it now. Do it in, do it in a safe area of your network and just, just get comfortable with it. Um, and then when you're ready, you can adopt six gig. Right? It, so you don't do the two changes at the same time, you kind of, you separate the changes. 
just you know, speaking specifically on WPA3 Enterprise, um, the reason I say it's, it's safe right, is because it is actually very similar. Um, so this is comparing a WPA3 Enterprise to WPA3 Enterprise transition SSID. There's basically, you have an, a different, you know, one AKM is removed and management frame um, is changed from uh, required to uh, capable. Right, that's those. That's pretty much your your differences there, um, and so this this turns out to be a very safe change to make. And I would say the majority of our customers that have enabled six gig have it, have done it with with WPA3 Enterprise um, because it's it's so easy to do. Um, a note on if you need to provision devices using device management, there's um, uh, the device the, the MDMs basically are not very smart with WPA. Um, so you can actually configure WPA2 um, in your profile and, and your clients will connect to WPA3 Enterprise um, using that. They don't generally know any better. So let's talk about roaming a little bit. Um, that's the other, you know, the other thing that comes up is will my devices actually discover six gigahertz? So now that we, we finally have a full device ecosystem, we did some testing with Android, iOS, uh, Mac OS, as well as uh, a couple different Windows clients. And this is our, um, our, our Juniper Sunnyvale office in, um, uh, in Sunnyvale. We've done testing in a, a, you know, a bunch of different customer locations, but this is just something I can, I can share. And it was a good data set. So um, basically these, these APs, 26 APs on this floor, all broadcasting a, you know, a five plus six SSID. Um, from a transmit power perspective, five gig was you know, a little bit lower than six gig, right? Six gig was about you know, one to three dB higher in, in general. So, here is uh, all six of those clients that I showed on that cart. Um, a roaming view over you know 150 seconds here. Some you know uh, some interesting things to point out, right? In some areas, the clients like they roam at the same time, um, but if you look, there's roaming that's happening you know all through here. Um, and here's just a different representation. So you have a uh, Windows client in here, a MacBook, and another MacBook all roaming at slightly different times, right? They're all in this cart, um, but I thought this was just a cool view to show that clients actually do roam in six gig. Um, so just some questions, do clients probe in six gig? Yes, they do. Uh, from a six gig roaming perspective, this client was actually probing on a couple of different, SSI, uh, sorry, a couple of different channels. So if you look in here, there's channel 133, channel 197, and then it actually connected, uh, roamed uh, on channel 21 and six gig. So it was like, look, you know, it, it had previously done out of band discovery using the RNR, and then it like pretty much did like a ping, you know, uh, to the you know using the probe is like okay, what is the actual signal strength that I hear you at now without needing to like do continuous scanning? So I think there's you know really optimized uh, off-channel scanning is you know with six gig to the point where you know if devices generally if they don't see the RNR in five gig or in two four they're not even going to scan six gig. So that RNR becomes really um, really important. Um, you'll also see 11K in six gig. So here is um, you know, just an 11K. And how you know the band is when you look at the operating class, which is all defined in the, in the spec. So let's talk about band preference. Um, these days, um, most all client devices out there have a throughput metric that they calculate when they roam. And that takes into a bunch of different metrics. This is the Android version. Um, there's iOS, there's Windows. Um, but channel width turns out to be really important. So we did some testing with um, you know, 80 megahertz and five gig and 40 megahertz, sorry, 80 megahertz and six gig, 40 megahertz and six gig. And here's just an example, right? So the top is, this is the same client and you know, back to back. So 40 meg in five gig, 80 meg in six gig, the client roamed from six to six pretty much continuously. When we went 40 megahertz on five gig, 40 megahertz on six gig, the client um, flip flopped between five and six gig. And how about if we use non-PSCs? So here is we just disabled all the PSCs um, and and see, to see what happened, right? So there's no no APs on a PSC. In this case, the client still roamed in six gig. Um, it still stayed generally on six to six. It did some five, um, but I think this is actually really encouraging, especially for those of you that are in Europe, where you may actually need to use 40 megahertz channels and may need to use non-PSCs. So guidance generally so far from vendors has been use PSCs, but I think we can actually change that. Uh, so, um, 
you know, we were waiting, we were waiting for iOS, we were waiting for macOS to kind of understand how they would behave. So I think probably no PSEs is okay. Um, and here's some resources, and don't let anybody ever tell you there's no interference in six gig because there are. Thank you. <laughs>